Hi, just a quick uh, follow-up video to my previous heat pump uh, video because someone in the comments uh, said that, commented that uh, my heat pump is too small and it's going to be basically useless in the cooler uh, months of the year. And uh, I forgot about evaporation and, you know, conduction to uh, through the concrete to the outside and everything. And um, it's just the 11 kilowatt heat pump that I've got is going to be might be pretty much useless. Um, so let's take a look at it and how I uh, came to decide on the 11 kilowatt uh, size of the heat pump. Now, I didn't, I don't think I mentioned it in the video and it was an oversight on my part. That was, my video was just like a single take waffle thing. Um, the 11 kilowatts, it doesn't take 11 kilowatts of electrical power, okay? It has a, it has, that's its heat pump output and heat pumps actually have an efficiency greater than one. Ah, it doesn't defy the laws of physics, Captain. Um, okay, I've done a video on heat pumps and it's all about the coefficient of performance. So if you, this one has the Maddie Mac that I've got, the Maddie Mac Elite, it has a coefficient of performance, a COP, of um, uh, up to 16 under certain, it's under certain conditions, the inlet temperature, the ambient temperature, the water flow, all sorts of things, right? There's a whole bunch of factors that go into that. But it, ha it can have a coefficient of performance of 16. What that means, is that one kilowatt of electrical input power equals 16 kilowatts of heat power. And yes, it does actually have an efficiency greater than one. It's how air conditioners work. They work on exactly the same principle. They're also heat pumps. They work on the same way. When you go and buy your five kilowatt air con, it doesn't take five kilowatts of electrical power. So in this particular case, the one I've got actually runs off a standard 10 amp, 240 volt uh, lead, right? So it's it's under it's under 2.4 kilowatts maximum. Um, but anyway, let's let's take a look of it. So the coefficient of performance of these things is really amazing. Now, what we did when we were sizing our uh, heat pump, Maddie Mac, this is the Australian company that make them. They actually have this calculator. So you put in all your details in there. Okay, how big's your pool and what type and whether you've got a cast like the 27 square meters, 40,000 approximate volume, uh, shading level 25%, wind is low. And is it an indoor pool? And you know, and does it have an infinity edge in the pool temperature you want it to run at nominally and solar PV and all that sort of jazz, right? So they put it in and they generate this PDF report for you. Okay, so I'm looking at the report that we used to size our heat pump here. So you know, look, look we're, we're looking targeting like a 28 degree C temperature across here, and uh, this is uh, so that's the um, heated versus unheated, and yeah, that's. Probably what we're seeing at the moment without the heat pump, we're probably seeing about we're seeing about 24 degrees C um, in the peak of because it's peak of uh, summer here. Well, it's not quite peak yet, but it's 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 getting there. Um, and we're currently you know 23 and a half, 24 degrees, something like that, without even heating uh, the pool. And of course, in winter time, yeah, expect to drop that to 14 degrees uh, Celsius. Of course, none of that Fahrenheit rubbish. Um, so uh, yeah, so let's let's take a look at it. So they have the all different models here. They've got the Eco, they've got the Elite, which, which we've got. So we've got the bottom of the range Elite one, the Elite V3 here. And uh, it uh, and it gives you recommendations here. Of, and they go up to like a 22 kilowatt model in that, um, but there's a 40 kilowatt version in the Eco and a 32 kilowatt version in the Eclipse over here. But anyway, that's not the most interesting part. So yeah, that's the one we've got, the Elite V3 there. Uh, so let's keep going. Here we go, heat pump run times. The charts below outline the optimal heater sizes based on run times needed by month. A, a larger heat pump can always be chosen as an upgrade to increase heat up times or to match with solar generation. However, typically the red zones are inefficient for most users. And I said in the video that we'd be uh, using excess power. Now that's not actually automated because this is gonna be a timer based system. So there'll be some days when uh, or a, either a timer-based system or we can turn it on manually when, you know, we know we're not charging the EV, uh, for example, uh, because it's already full. Uh, let's just whack some excess energy into the pool and keep it warm. You know, why not? Um, better than feeding it back to the grid and get paid a pittance for it. Anyway, so uh, what this shows here is that the, uh, so what we've got, okay, so this these are the months down here, okay, and because we're on the uh, opposite side of the flat earth, um, uh, right, uh, June, uh, sorry, 
July is middle of winter here, right? And of course, uh, January is middle of uh, summer here. And the runtime, oh, okay, so let's go to the Elite V3 with the cover, because we have a pool cover. Haven't installed it, probably going to install it today. Um, I've got the roller and everything. You've seen that in the build uh, videos, but it has a cover, okay? And you can see the difference without a cover over here. Check out this. I mean, you know, well, yeah, sorry, I can't draw on. Can I draw on this? Yeah, I might be able to draw. Look, do, can I? Can I highlight? Can I? What can I? I don't know. This is Acrobat thing. I don't know. Oops. No. Oop. I've no. That's a highlighter. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> let's go back here, shall we? Can I like Control Z that or something? Yes, I can. Okay. So with a pool cover, okay. Um, you can see that the runtime here, let's say January, we're, we're not January, we're December down here at the moment, okay? So runtime, okay, with the 11 kilowatt unit, which is the base model that we've got, okay, we only need to run it. It says we only need to run it typically, typically, of course, depends on the solar insulation, the day and the previous days and whether or not you left the pool cover off or whether you're consistently putting it on. All sorts of factors play into it, right? And the ambient temperature when you're using the heat pump on that particular day and all sorts of jazz, right? But anyway, um, so, so but these are the basic numbers that they've uh, actually calculated here. We only need to run the heat pump for three hours a day and it's, say, one and a half kilowatt um, you know, current draw and power draw. I haven't actually measured um, that properly yet, but it's going to be in that order, you know, a kilowatt, one and a half kilowatts, something like that. Because um, we're only ever going to, unless we desperately need to heat it up faster, we're only going to run it on like the medium mode. And that's what it recommends. It's some smart medium mode or something. It's got low, which you run at night because it's more silent. Um, and it's got some super max um, mode as well. But it recommends you leave the intelligent middle mode on. So I only have to run it for three hours a day. So what, four kilowatts, five kilowatt hours um, energy a day, something like that. We've easily got that excess uh, thing. But you'll notice that, of course, in uh, winter time, right, in the middle of winter, we would practically have to run it like 23, 24 hours a day. We'd have to run it continuously, continuously to bring the water up to 28 degrees. Now, of course, you don't have to bring it to 28. You might bring it to 24 and or something, right? And just to take the edge off, uh, for example, or 21 even. I don't mind. 21 degrees, perfectly fine. Mrs. EV blog might complain, but I, I, I wouldn't, right? That, that's all right. Um, so, yeah, but to bring it up to 28, which is the baseline that's done the calculations on here, that requires 24 hours a day. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's like <laughs> it requires a lot. But we decided that we're probably not going to use the pool in winter. So that's why we only bought the bottom of the range one. But even look, even if we went to like a top of the range, 32 kilowatt unit, right, we'd still have to run it for eight hours a day. Right. To, to, to try and bring that water temperature up in the middle of winter. And, you know, nah. Not really, you know, when, yeah, winter might have a few chilly swims, something like that. But, you know, <laughs> we can dump. And, of course, your solar insulation in winter um, isn't as, well, solar production isn't as good in uh, the middle of winter. Of course, we won't have as much excess energy and stuff like that. And, yeah, we're probably just not going to bother to heat it. So, no, we did not size our unit for winter time but as you can see so but we wanted really the shoulder months like april um you know stuff like that may possibly right before just before winter there so you know yeah you might have to run it for 16 hours a day if you wanted to keep it up to 28 degrees um which is pretty warm you know <laughs> 28 degrees is pretty warm but anyway there, there there you go right so even if we went for like what is the best the eclipse and max with a cover and uh, what is it? What? 120 kilowatt unit? What? Seriously? Seriously? <laughs> What's going on? I don't, I don't get what's going on there. Anyway, we've, we've got the 11. We've got the 11 kilowatt unit here. Um, and so, yeah, even if you bought the bigger unit, like, you're still going to have to run it for many hours a day to even 
possibly heat it up in the middle of winter. And I don't think we've got the full 40,000 litres either. I think we're actually smaller uh, than that. So uh, heat your pool for free, solar matching, all that sort of stuff, right? So it gives you um, PV production, 11 kilowatt heat pump, uh, run time, for example. So if you time it during that uh, period there. At the moment, I have no way to actually automate this. Uh, into my solar production, so the excess solar. You know how I, I do charge my EV using 100% excess solar because I've got the Zappi charger. Now, Zappi do actually have a companion uh, heat, heat unit for that. Um, it's called the Eddy, I think, or is it the, I don't know, they have all these silly names. Um, they do actually have a heater that ties into the Zappi system um, that, or is it Harvey or something? Harvey or Eddie? I think it's the Eddie. Uh, Eddie, Harvey is the, I don't know, something, bloody names. I think Harvey is the uh, comms unit or something. Anyway, um, yeah, so they have this heat pump unit, but it it's designed to directly control motors and stuff. It's not like it yeah, it doesn't integrate well and it doesn't have like, and the Maddie Mac, as far as I'm aware, does not have like an, an external, um, it might have a control input. I have to double check that. Um, so there might be some way, like I wish Zappi actually made just a box that simply gave you, um, you know, excess, it, it simply turned on a relay. It turned on a relay when uh, you, well, I could, might be able to use the motor drive eddy. Maybe it's got a relay option, real auxiliary relay option, but I'd need some sort of auxiliary relay thing to tie that into the EV and then have only excess solar and then have the heat pump come on or the EV and you can prioritize between those or something like that. But anyway, yeah, I don't think it works well. It doesn't integrate well with my uh, Zappi. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, uh, we have to even manually time it or something like that. But anyway, uh, so there it is again, the 11 kilowatt uh, thing. And like in June, yeah, like July peak winter, you'd have to run it for like 24 hours a day or something like that. So yeah, the, th the thing is we don't expect to use it in winter time, really. We don't, yeah, you know, it'll have some impact if we dump some excess energy in there. It might take the edge off if we want to go for a chilly swim in the middle of winter. Um, I'll, I'll probably be doing that. <laughs> it's good for you. Cry free cryo treatment. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, you know, anyway, that's how we sized our heat pump. Uh, unit. It was actually based on their actual calculations. They generated this custom report for us and it's it's really quite good. So yeah, we just wanted to take the edge off in the shoulder months here when we might only run it for like, you know, eight to 10 hours a day, like just, you know, using mostly um, solar sort of stuff. So yeah, you know, so yeah, those months, you know, May through to August, something like that, it's probably not going to be that terrific unless you want to really want to flog it 24 hours a day but you know i don't think we'll be doing that but anyway there you go i just wanted to show you that's how we sized our heat pump anyway found that interesting thumbs up as always discussed down below catch you next time